All right, Israel. I'm back with the next lesson, the next part of the lesson of Israel redeemed captivity from heathen slash beast. Okay, we finished off. I believe it was uh, Revelation 17, verse 1 to 18. But I'm going to read it over, though, on the start from 17, 1 to 18 again. And then we can continue from there. Okay, God, Lord is willing. In Jesus' name, amen. Revelations. Okay. So we're going to jump straight into it. Revelations chapter 17, verse 1 to 18. Okay. And there came out of the seven, and there came one of the seven angels, which had, had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. The waters is people, nations, multitudes, and tongues, right? With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Okay? Fornication, they committed spiritual fornication. Just like Israel committed spiritual fornication against the most high God of Israel, Jesus Christ, by worshiping idols. So the kings of the earth, they worship these idols. That's their gods. Okay? And their gods is idols, nothing but wood and stone. Okay, that cannot save in the time of trouble, cannot do nothing, cannot see, cannot smell, nothing. Okay, their idols is devils. Okay. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. See that? So he carried me away see drunk with what the wine of her fornication now the wine of her fornication is idols this is idol worshiping you gotta understand all the nations of the world this is why they they're going to have the wrath of god upon them too because they worship idols the heathen they worship idols okay wood and stone um that's why when you go to Jeremiah, we're going to come right back. That's why when you go to Jeremiah, see, the Lord put Israel in the seven years of captivity in the Babylonian kingdom with Nebuchadnezzar because they were doing the works of the flesh in the land. They were doing wickedness, shedding blood, and worshiping idols. Okay, the northern kingdom went to the Assyrian captivity. Now, let's go to Jeremiah 25 because this is what the world does, the heathen do. They, they worship idols with the work of their hands. And the Bible says that they that make them are like unto them devils. You see that? So the Bible says they that make them are like unto them. So if the idols is devils and they that make them are like unto those idols... Where are the people that make them? Devils. Okay. Jeremiah 25. We're going to go back to Revelation. Jeremiah 25. This is why the Lord said this here. Because the Lord, he punished Judah and put them in the Babylonian captivity because they were doing the works of the flesh and the land. They were worshiping idols, right? But he also going to punish the heathen too because of the work of their hands also. Jeremiah 25, and let's start at verse 12. Matter of fact, let's start at verse 8. Jeremiah 25, verse 8. Therefore, Daniel, that's what Daniel understood. He said, I understood of the books of Jeremiah the prophet. Right? Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, because you have not heard, you have not heard my words. Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. And will bring them against this land, right? Jerusalem. This land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about. And will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and a hissing and, and perpetual desolations. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness. 
the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the sound, the sound of the millstones and the light of the candle. And this whole land shall be a what? A desolation. And an astonishment in these nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. And it shall come to pass when seventy years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon. See? So hold on. The, the king of Babylon is, is his servant, he said, right? But after the seven years is up, God said he's going to punish Nebuchadnezzar. See, because Nebuchadnezzar, they worship idols also. And it shall come to pass when seven years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity. And the land of the Chaldeans, and will make it perpetual desolations. And I will bring upon that land all my words which I have pronounced against it. Even all that is written in this book, and his word don't return to him void, right? Which Jeremiah hath prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also. And I will recompense them according to their deeds. And according to the work of their own, what? Hands. You see that? Now, notice, let's go back to Revelation. We come, we're going to come back to Jeremiah. But just... Come with me to Je uh, Revelation 17. Then it just say that in verse 2, Je Je uh, Revelation 17 and 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So even the inhabitants of the earth been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. The devising of idols is the beginning of spiritual fornication. We must understand that. So the whole earth been made drunk with the wine of her fornication, Babylon. Okay? They worship idols. That's why when you go to Mecca, Arabia, that cube, you have all these different nations worshiping that cube. You see? They're worshiping that cube over there in Mecca. Okay? Because Mecca... Um, Mecca, Saudi Arabia is the great whore mystery Babylon and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication that's why mystery Babylon in the last days came to God remember us to give her her what to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath because in Jeremiah he made all the nations to drink the cup, right? That's why the Lord Jesus only removed the cup of Israel, Judah and Israel. He drank their cup. That's why he died on the tree on the cross for their sins, because he drank their cup. He removed their cup of trembling. He didn't remove the rest of the nations of the earth whom the Lord told Jeremiah to go to, which we're about to read. Watch this. So the Lord said, verse 14, Jeremiah 25, 14, For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will recompense them according to their what? Their deeds, their works, and according to the work of their what? Hands. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me, Take the wine cup. He's, he's saying, Take the wine cup to Jeremiah of this fury at my hand and calls all the nations. He didn't say some. He said, call all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. See? And they shall drink and be moved and be mad. Right? And be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. So the Lord said, and they shall drink and be moved. Right? And be mad because of the sword that I will send upon them. Then took I the cup at the Lord's hand and made all the nations to drink unto whom the Lord has sent me. See, that's why when you go to Jeremiah, go to Jeremiah 50, 1. What did the Lord say about mystery Babylon? Jeremiah 51 and verse 7. Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's what? Lord's hand. Hand that made all the earth drunken. Revelation 17 and 2. 
with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the habitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. You see that? Because all the nations worship idols, devils. Jeremiah 51 and 7. Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand and uh, that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are what? They're mad. This is why, let's go back to Revelation 17 and verse 19. This is why the Lord remembered to give Mystery Babylon that punishment. Revelation uh, 16 and 19. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God. He ain't forget. See, from the Old Testament, God ain't forget. To give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. You see that? Now, I'm gonna show you. I'm, I'm not gonna get much into it, but he only removed the he only removed the Israel's cup. Head over here to call me over to. me over here to Isaiah 51. I'm not gonna get too much in that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that for the um I think it's the Passover lesson. God Lord's willing in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah 51 and 17. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord. Uh-oh. The cup of his fury. See, all oh, everybody drunk. The Lord the, the wrath of the Lord. You see, everybody, even Israel. But he only, but he removed Israel because his mercy is to Israel. So he removed their cup, not everybody else's. The Lord himself came in the flesh. And, you know, he drunk their cup for them. Because that's how much the Lord loves Israel. So the Lord said, awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. That cup, remember Jeremiah, he told Jeremiah to make all nations to drink. Thou hast drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. There is no, there is none to guide her among all the sons whom she have brought forth. Neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she have brought up. These two things are come unto thee. Who shall be sorry for thee? Desolation and destruction and the famine and the sword. By whom shall I comfort thee? Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of, the, of all the streets as a wild bull in the net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. Therefore hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Mm. Thus saith thy Lord... The Lord and thy God that pleadeth the cause of his people. Who he pleading the cause of? His people, not everybody. That's why Jesus said, um, that no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. You see? Because, and that's why the Lord said, their righteousness is of me. See, Israel's righteousness of God, which is of God. God's righteousness is Christ for Israel. We do the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Thus saith the, thy Lord, the Lord and thy and thy God, that pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my the cup of my fury. He removed their cup because he's gonna come in the flesh and drink it for them. Thou shalt no more drink it again. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee. Who's that? The heathen. Which have said to thy soul, bow down, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body at the ground. And as and as the street to them that went over. You see, that's why Christ said. That's why Christ said. Here, let me see if I, if I could get it. Let me see. If this is the one. This is why Christ said this here in the New Testament. Because God came in the flesh. He said he was going to remove their cup, right? Matthew 20, verse 20 to 23.
What did God say when he came in the flesh? Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What will thou? Jesus said to, to her, What will thou? She saith unto him, Grant that these grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. Listen to what Jesus tell her. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink? What cup is that? The cup of Israel. That I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. They said unto him, We are able. And he said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not, a, is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father, the saints to elect. So notice he said, Jesus said to them, ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. That's why John said, I indeed baptize thee with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me, whose shoes I am unworthy to bear, he shall baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost to Israel, the saints, the elect. Okay? And that's why the Bible says we are dead to sin because we are partakers of, uh, we've been baptized into Christ. We've been baptized into his death. You see? Because we are dead to what? Sin. I'm not going to get too much in the cup of rem removal. I mean, that's for the lesson. I just wanted to show you that. Let's go back to Revelation 17. Okay. So Christ came and removed Israel's cup. All right. 17 and verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. We understand what that is now. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. See, that woman is the great city that reigned over the kings. You can read that in verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Okay? Okay. Okay, verse 4. Precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations. That's not America with the Statue of Liberty. Have a golden cup in her hand, in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. You see that? And upon her and upon her forehead was a name written. Mystery. Babylon the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, the elect, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. We're just going to read to verse 8. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst this thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her which have the seven heads and ten horns, okay? And these seven heads are seven mountains, I believe, if you read that in verse 9. And here's the mind which have wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth, the city. The woman is the great city, so the, the great city sit on seven mountains, okay? Um, okay. which had the seven heads and ten horns, okay? And we know the ten horns is kings. Verse 8, the beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into what? Perdition, destruction. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not, see, they're going to wonder whose names were, were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not yet and is not and yet is okay so who's not written in the book of the world uh, 
the foundation of the world is the whole entire world. Okay. The only ones written in the book of life is the saints, the elect. Now, I just wanted to read verse 8. Let's head over to Revelations 1 is, uh, 11 and 8. 11 and 7, I'm sorry. Notice the beast that thou sawest was in verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell upon the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Let's go to Revelation 11. Verse 7. Revelation 11 and verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, that's the two witnesses, right? The beast that descendeth out of the bottomless pit. Didn't we just read that? In Revelation 17, the beast that, that it is and is not yet. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that descendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome, you see, overcome them and what? And kill them. Shall overcome them and kill them, right? Okay. Okay, let's keep going. So, and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that descendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them, right? Let's go back to Revelation 17 and 8. So, the beast that's coming out of where? The bottomless pit is going to overcome them and what? Kill them, right? So the mystery, so mystery Babylon, the beast is is the one that's going to come out of the bottomless pit. The beast that thou sawest was in Revelation seventeen and eight. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into destruction. And they that dwell upon the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life. From the foundation of the world, when they beheld, behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. So that's the same beast. See, the beast that's coming out of the bottomless pit in Revelations 11 and 7. Okay. In Revelation 17 and 8. Let's keep going. Let's go back. Let's, let's go back to Revelations 11 and now let's read verse 8. Revelations 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. What great city? That's Jerusalem, which is spiritually, which is spiritually, is called Sodom and what? In Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Where were Christ crucified? In Jerusalem. So their dead bodies, after the beast that rise up out of the bottomless pit, you know, he's going to make what? Shall make war against them and overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies is going to be where? Notice it says spiritually is called. Spiritually is called. So this is Jerusalem called Sodom. So spiritually, Jerusalem is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, right? Let's keep going. Where our Lord was crucified. 
Let's go back to Revelation 17 and 6 now. Revelation 17 and 6. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Right? Let's jump over to Revelations 18, verse 21 to 24. Revelations 18, 21 to 24. Mm-hmm. Okay, Revelations 18, 21 to 24. And a mighty angel took up a stone, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be, be thrown down. Okay. Um, into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by the sorceries, for by what? For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Uh oh. Now, didn't the Bible say Satan deceived the whole world? Right? But notice it. The Lord said, by thy sorceries to mystery Babylon were all nations deceived. Let's keep going. And in her was found the blood of the prophets. What was found in her? Was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Right? Let's go to Revelations 18, verse 1 to 20 now. Revelations 18, verse 1 to 20. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having, a, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and, be, and has become the habitation of devils. And the hold of every foul spirit in a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her what? Fornication. See, because they worship idols. They worship idols. The devising of idols is the beginning of spiritual fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. How? Worshipping idols. That's why they worship that big cube over there in Mecca. Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. That's why they all sit there and s surround. Remember, that's the nations, peoples, and tongues. The waters is the nation, people, and tongues. They all sit there and worship that cube. That's an idol. Of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies, of her delicacies. And I heard, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God have remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her, to her her works. 
and the cup and the cup which she had filled filled to her double how much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her for she said in her heart i sit a queen and am and am no widow and shall not see what she said and shall see no sorrow so that city said what and shall not see sorrow see no sorrow so she said she sit as a queen because remember i showed you all the nations as women right now listen to this how much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her for she said in her heart i sit a queen mm. and am no widow and shall see no sorrow listen to what she said in the old testament see because the most high you gotta understand the most high didn't forget come with me to isaiah 47 1 to 15. so she said i said as a said as a queen right and she's not no what she's no widow remember jerusalem it was a widow because what the lord did to jerusalem and her children he plucked out and scattered them to the nations to uh consume the filthiness out of them by the you know to consume the filthiness out of them that they may be cleansed by the gospel of, of jesus christ now our, our mother well israel's mother was a widow right but the lord going to comfort her and bring her children back into his vineyard into her into the land because they're going to be all righteous at that time they're going to fulfill the law of the lord by staying away from the flesh and walking and living in the spirit living in the spirit and they're going to be um, called trees of righteousness and he ain't going to pluck them up out of you know jerusalem anymore okay now so she said am no widow right call me over here to isaiah 27. isaiah 20 Seven. Oh, Isaiah 47. I'm sorry. Isaiah 47. Because she said, Mystery Babylon said the same thing over here in the Old Testament. Okay. Isaiah 47. So she said, She said, As a queen, right? And, and no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Isaiah 47, 1 to 15. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. O who? Virgin daughter of Babylon. That's what the Lord called Israel, O virgin of Israel. The nations are women. We, we, we're going to talk about the virgin part, the guile. We're going to talk about Revelation 14. Um, God, Lord, is willing in Jesus' name. Amen. So the Lord said, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne. O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt be shall um, shall no more be called tender and delicate. See, remember what Daniel was telling Nebuchadnezzar about the the dreams. Nebuchadnezzar kingdom is the Babylon Chaldeans. He he was the head of gold, right? Now, take the millstones and grind mill. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the legs. See. Mystery Babylon is like a woman because I showed you all the nations is women. But the Lord Jesus Christ married one land, one woman. That's Jerusalem, Israel. Of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstone and grind mill, uncover thy locks, make bare the lake, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. See? Yeah, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit thou silent, and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called, what? The Lady of Kingdoms. She said she was a queen, right? And she ain't going to see no widow or no sorrow, right? She's not going to be called the lady of kingdoms, the lady, because the nations are women. The lady of kingdom. That's why Revelation says the 144,000, these were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. We'll talk about that. God, Lord, will in Jesus' name. Amen. The lady of kingdoms, right? I was wroth with my people, the Lord said. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thine hand, Babylon. Thou didst show them no mercy. Upon the ancient hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. And and thou says, I shall be a lady forever. 
Mm. So that thou does not lead these things to thy heart. See, but she don't know what the Lord got the judgment on her. Neither does this remember the latter end of it. Therefore hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures, that dwelleth carelessly, that sayest in thy heart, I am and none, up, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow. Then she say that. Let's go back to Revelations 17. Let's go back to Revelation 17. We coming right back. Um, Revelation 18 and verse 7. How much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously. Right? Then he just say, therefore hear now this, thou art given to pleasures, right? So she said, how much, excuse me. Um, so the Lord said, how much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Let's go back to Isaiah 47 and verse eight. Therefore hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures that dwell, that dwellest carelessly, that, say in, in the, that sayest in thy heart, I am and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow. Mm. Didn't she say that? Neither shall I know the loss of children. Uh-oh. Jerusalem did, right? She was a widow. So you think the Lord ain't going to punish Mystery Babylon for her wickedness and sins and, and idols? Verse 9. But these two things shall come to thee. In a moment in one day, the loss of children. Uh-oh. The Lord said what? But these two things shall come to thee in, in, a, in a moment in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries. Let's stop right there. Let's go back to Revelations 18 and 24. And in her, um, excuse me, 23, and the light of candle shall shine no more in at all in thee in mystery Babylon, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be no more heard at all in thee. For thy merchants were more, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth. Watch this. For by thy sorceries were all nations, what? Deceived. By thy sorceries were all, all nations deceived. Let's go back. Isaiah 47. In verse 9, the bottom at 9. And their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries. Uh-oh. And for the great abundance of thine enchantments. So how was all nations deceived? By her sorceries. You got to understand. That's how Satan deceived the whole world. Verse 10. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none see of me thy wisdom and thy knowledge. It hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thy heart, I am and none else beside me. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Right? Which thou shalt not know. Okay. Verse 12. Stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be that thou shalt be able to profit, if so be thou mayest prevail. Thou art worried in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. That's why God said Israel is his witness. There is no God but he. Because He, the Lord Jesus is going to get glorified in Israel that he is God. Not these idols. The nations can't. The nations don't have no God. You know, they, their gods is idols within stone. But we're talking about the living God. That's why Jesus said, you are my witnesses. Mm -hmm. To Israel. Behold. Up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. See, the astrologers and, and the things that the enchantments 
and the sorceries that Mystery Babylon uses, none of them can save her from the wrath of God. That's why the Lord said, none can pluck, none can uh, deliver out of my hand. See, because the nation's gods and Mystery Babylon's gods, those idols, they're not real. They're not real. They can't save Mystery Babylon from the judgment of the living God, Jesus Christ. They can't do it. This is why the Lord said here, we're going to come right back. This is why the Lord said here. In Isaiah 43, verse 8 to Thirteen. This is why the Lord said this here. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the, watch this, let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses. Do the nations have witnesses? The Lord said, let the nations bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified. Remember, God is the, is the righteous judge. So he said, let them be, bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is truth. You see, there's none that can say, oh, these gods of the nations are real. Because we can see those that they are idols, that they can't move. So they have no witnesses. But Israel have witnessed that the living God, Jesus Christ, is real. They have, they, they, excuse me, the, the Israelites are, is God's witnesses that he is real. That he's the living God. The nations don't have no witnesses. We know that the nation's gods, because we, we see them, they're idols. Wood and stone, they can't move, talk, hear, smell, save in a time of trouble. But the living God, Jesus Christ, can save his people out of all trouble. He can deliver them out of any trouble because he's the living God. You understand what I'm saying? This is why the Lord said, let them bring their witnesses, the nations, that they may be justified. The Lord said, or let them hear and say it is it is truth. Ye are my witnesses, say of the Lord. Who? Coming right back, Isaiah 41 and 8. What, what did the Lord say? Who he's talking to? It's to show you he's not talking to everybody in the world that they are his witnesses, but to somebody. But thou Israel, but thou Israel art my servant. Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Thou, whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men, they often said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and has not cast thee away. Let's go back to Isaiah 43. God said, Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servants. So we know he's talking to Israel only, right? Whom I have chosen. So who is God's witnesses that, that he is God? Israel. I have chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. This is why Christ said, um, I am he in the New Testament. This is why he says that. I am he because Jesus is I am. That's why when you go to Revelations, see, God, oh, matter of fact, let's go to Isaiah 46. God don't change. This is why he said here, Isaiah 46 and verse 4 to Israel. He said, even to your old age, I am he. Even to the whores his will I carry you. I have made and I will bear and I will carry and deliver you. That's why. God, see, God always is, that's why he's called the beginning and the ending. Because he was telling Israel, he's always going to be God. From the beginning and the end. See, that's why he's the ancient of days. 
He's God in the beginning and he's going to be God in the end. Christ is God. That's why when you go to Revelations. One in verse eight, what did Christ say? I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Didn't God say he always going to be the same? He is God. He's been telling Israel. He, he's God in the beginning, and he's going to be God when he come back at his second coming. That's why he's trying, he telling Israel, he don't change. He, there is no God but him. That's why he said in Deuteronomy 32, and thing 39, he said, there's no God with me. I wound, I heal. I kill, I make alive. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost is one. God delivered Israel in the Old Testament. He coming to deliver them in the New Testament. Why did Jesus say, I am Alpha and Omega? Because the Word is God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word, uh, excuse me, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. You see, the word was made flesh. God was manifested in the flesh. They're one. So God came in the flesh. He was telling Israel he don't change. He always going to be God. Those idols are not their gods. Israel was big in idolatry. But they have the living God. The Lord had to cleanse them from their filthiness. From those idols that they became alienated from, uh, from God. From. He, that's why he said in Ezekiel, I think Ezekiel, I think it's 19. That's why he said, I will, he said he's going to rule over them with fury poured out because... He's always going to be Israel's king. That's why when he came in the flesh, he's the king of the Jews. Just like they rejected God, in I think in the book of Samuel, because they wanted a physical king like the heathen, and the Lord told Samuel, hearken unto them. For they have not rejected thee but me for reigning over them. But God had it all set up. That's why he was coming in the flesh. He's always going to reign over Israel. That's why Christ said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Because you have to understand that God became all in all. Yes, he became the son. He became the son of man. He, be, he is the word of God. He is the prophet like unto Moses. Um, God became all in all so that he can gather Israel. That's why Christ said that they may be one as we are one. Because the point is for Israel to be one with Christ. Christ is one with God. So if the word is God, Israel is God, because they're going to be one with Christ. Christ is one with God, so Israel is going to be one with God. They're God. That's why they're called the sons of God. That's why Paul said the suffering of this present world is not compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. This is a light affliction. Got to go through much tribulation to enter the kingdom. The point is to know the will of the Lord. God is always going to be God. It don't matter if it's modern times we live in. It. That's why he said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord. Which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Who's going to be God in the end? The God of Israel. Who's God in the beginning? The God of Israel. There is no Savior but him. This is why he said, there is no Savior but me. You got to understand what he's saying. So, who's coming back? That's God. 
there should be a child born unto us, right? His name should be called the uh, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That was God. Israel, Zechariah, na, 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 behold your king come lowly. God is always going to be Israel's king. God is always going to be Israel's shepherd. God is always going to be Israel's savior. God became all in all. That's why it says, I'm not going to get too deep into this, but this is why it says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 28, and when all things shall be subdued unto him, because God put all things under Christ's feet, just like he did with Adam. Christ is the second Adam. He's the last Adam. You see, that was God. God became man because Adam was the son of God. But through Adam, death came. But through this last Adam, life comes through the second Adam, eternal life. That's why God had to come and, you know, go into the ground for three days. Because Adam was made from the dirt. Okay? And he was made a living soul. But the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Because the father raised up Jesus Christ from the dead on the third day by God's spirit. Why did, see, the thing is, that's why Jesus said, I came to fulfill all written about me in the Psalms and the prophets. Because you have to understand, Christ said, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will. The whole book is Christ. Christ is the word. So if he come in the volume of the book to do his will, the word, that's what the word was made flesh. So God came, it's like Adam come from the dirt. God came into the ground for three days. Just like how Jonas was in the in the well's belly for three days, the son of man went in the heart of earth for three days. So therefore, when he went in the earth, he raised God raised up his word by God's spirit, and he also raised up Israel with him. That's why Jesus said, when the son of man be lifted up, I will draw him into me. Because we go to Hosea 6, 1 to 2, that he shall revive us. You see? So therefore, the grave, Israel will always die and go to where? Back to the ground because they would transgress the Most High's law. Sin is the transgression of the law. So that's why the Son of Man was manifested in the flesh to destroy the works of the devil. Because Satan had the power of death. That's why Israel will always die. So the Lord came and what? Ransomed Israel from the grave. You understand? That's why he went into the heart of the earth and that he was raised up from the dead. So when he raised up, he was made a what? A quickening spirit, the word of Jesus. And he also raised up Israel. So through his body, Jesus' body was the perfect offering, the perfect atonement. Right? And his blood purges their conscience because the carnal mind is enmity against God's law. Therefore, it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. There was nothing wrong with the law. The commandments is holy, just, and good. The law is spiritual. And Israel couldn't keep the law that spiritual with the carnal mind. That's why God had to put the law in their inward parts. Okay? And the blood of Christ cleanses the conscience. You see? How much shall the blood of Christ who do the eternal spirit purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Because the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin it couldn't purge the conscience the blood of regular animals of bulls and goats that's why they the high priest would always go back into the physical tabernacle every year because they would keep sinning because the blood of bulls and goats couldn't purge the conscience the law is spiritual right that's why Galatians 3 19 says wherefore then serve the law it was added because of of transgressions till it was only added because of the transgressions in the time of the Old Testament till the seed, the promised seed, to whom should come, the promise was made. It was only to that promised seed to come. That's why the Bible said the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. You see? Because if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law because you're keeping the law of God in the inward man. Therefore, you're walking in the Spirit. You won't fulfill the, 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 the um, lust of the flesh if Christ's Spirit is in you. That's what the Bible says. If Christ, the spirit of Christ is in you, the body is what? Dead because of sin. So if the spirit of Christ is in you, your body is dead because of what? Sin. You dead. But you're dead just like Jesus died. You're dead. But you're dead to what? Sin. 
because your life is hid with Christ in God. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. So the saints, the elect, they are dead to sin. They won't sin because they're born of God. Whosoever born of, of God don't sin. So therefore, they're dead to sin until, you know, when Christ comes, he's, their life is going to get what? Eternal life. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. We've been, they've been planted in the likeness of his death. They're gonna be planted. They're gonna be just. Um, they're gonna be planted together in the likeness of his resurrection. He was made a quickness spirit. The Father raised him up. That's why the Bible says in uh, Romans eight and eleven, if the spirit of Christ is, is in you, he shall also what quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Paul said, we shall not all sleep. We should be changed in the moment of twinkling of an eye. Right, because the dead in Christ is going to raise first, and those that remain that didn't taste death from birth is going to be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air because they have the spirit of Christ in them. It's about the destruction of the flesh that the soul may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. That's why the Lord said, Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Though the, though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Because they put on the new man. The old man and his deeds is gone. So therefore they won't do the works of the flesh. Because the spirit of Christ is in them. Their body is dead. Because of sin. The body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is like because of righteousness. So therefore they're going to do the will of the Lord. Right? And that's why when you read 1 Corinthians 15 and 28, and when all things shall be subdued unto him, because Christ is the last Adam, just like God gave all things in the Adam hand, he gave all things into his son Christ, the word. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also be subject unto him, to God, because he's one with the Father, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost is one, Right? The son shall also himself be subjected to him that put all things under him. Why? That God may be all in all. You see that? That was the point. And God may be all in all. It was the point for God to gather Israel. That's why when you go to Galatians chapter 3. And um, 15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye what thankful, the body of Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14, for he is our peace who have made both one through his body, and have broken down the middle wall of partition, division between us, because they were split, southern and northern kingdom, right, in the time of Solomon. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make of himself of twain as two, one new man, so making peace. So there are no longer two kingdoms, just like he said, Jesus said in Ezekiel 37, 21 to 22, when he showed the son of man, Ezekiel, putting the sticks together. That's how Christ was going to bring them together through his body on the tree on the cross. Therefore, um, so it was the point was for to make himself of twain. That's two, the southern and northern kingdom, one new man. You know how God said, um, Adam and Eve, you know, the man shall leave to his mother and cleave to his wife and they be one flesh. One flesh. So therefore, of twain, one new man, so making peace, right? So making peace, they're no longer two divided anymore into two kingdoms anymore, but they're one in the body of Christ, Right? Now they're the one new man because through Christ, now they will have to put off the old man and put on a new man, which is Christ, because Christ is the image of the invisible God. That's why it says in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 10, and have put on the new man. Remember, it just said, of twain, one new man, so making peace. So through the new man, they put off their wicked deeds, the flesh, and they walk in the living in the spirit, and have put on the new man, which is what? What is the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him? So Christ is the image of the invisible God because it pleased the Father that all the fullness dwell in Christ. 
the Godhead. That's why the Bible says we are complete. They are complete in him. Christ, which is the head of all principality, right? Galatians 2 verse 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, Christ. And you are complete in him, Christ. They're one, which is the head of all principality and power. That's why Christ is the head of the church. And they are the body of Christ, his, his, his members. So you got Christ and you got God. Christ is the knowledge, the wisdom of God. So they have to be renewed in what? And the knowledge. And I put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. Knowledge. After the image of him that created him. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 1 and verse 30. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. And righteousness and sanctification and redemption. You see that? First Corinthians 1 and 24. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and what? The wisdom of God. Colossians. Let's go to Colossians. See, this is very important. It's Colossians chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. That their hearts may be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of, of the full assurance of understanding and the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, the word of life. Christ, he is the knowledge. That's why the Lord said in Baruch chapter, I believe it's um, Baruch chapter 3 and 12, Thou hast forsaken the fountain of wisdom, Sirach 1. Verse 1 to 5, the word of God most high is the fountain of wisdom. So therefore they put on the new man, which is created and what? And renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. That's why they've been taught by Christ, the knowledge, the wisdom. This is the reason why Christ, this is the reason why Christ said here in John chapter 6, in verse 45, it is written in the prophets, they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that have heard and have learned of the Father cometh unto me. Because they will be taught by God, because the word is made flesh. The word is the knowledge, the wisdom of God. So God is going to teach them through Jesus Christ. Right? That's why the Bible says, when you go to Ephesians chapter 4, in verse 20 to 21, be but ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. See, with twain, one new man, the new man you renewed in knowledge, right? Old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Let's go back to first Corinthians because it's about how if they're gonna be taught by God, all be taught of God and They've been taught if you've been taught by Christ, you've been taught by God because Christ is the knowledge, the wisdom of God. So therefore, you if you've been taught by Christ, you have what? Then the mind of the Lord. Remember, he said in the Old Testament, your ways is not like mine, and your thinking is not like mine. But the the Lord want Israel mind to be like his. That's why Christ is the image of the invisible God. They are they're gonna have the mind of the Lord, the saints to let. Because they is God. That's why in the end, remember, in, remember in the Old Testament, Moses, the Lord told Moses, no one can look at him and live. So he showed Moses his back part because you can't see God's face and live. But when you go to Revelations, they have the Father's name in their forehead, the 144,000. Revelation 22, they shall see his face, the Bible says, God's face, because his name is in their forehead. Okay, that's why when you go here, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 16, for who have known the mind of the Lord, who have known the mind of the Lord. He said, Your, uh, our mind is not like his, and his thinking is not like ours, that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. So if we've been taught by Christ and learned by Christ, we've been taught by God. Like Christ said, they shall be all taught by God. So therefore, if we've been taught by Christ and we have the mind of the Lord. We have the mind of Christ. Therefore, we have the mind of God because Christ is the knowledge, the wisdom, the word of God. So therefore, we, the saints have the mind of the Lord through Christ, because Christ is the word 
of life, the word, the wisdom, the knowledge of God. You understand? Okay. Now, I'm going to get back. I know I went off to something else, but this is very important. That's why the Bible says here to, the, to Christ church, this is why the Bible says here to have the same mind so that there be no divisions in the church and the body. So there, if there won't be no divisions if they have the same mind, which is the mind of who? The mind of Christ, the mind of the Lord. So if they've been all taught by Christ, they've been taught by God. Therefore, they have the mind of God because they have the mind of Christ, who is the knowledge, the wisdom of God. Therefore, there won't be no divisions in the church of Christ with the saints to elect because they all have one mind, which is the mind of the Lord. Right? So that's why when you go to Romans chapter 15. See? Romans 15 and 5. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. See? That's why the Bible says stay forever learning but never coming into the knowledge of the truth. Because... Is deeper than what we think. If we not born again here, we not enter in the kingdom of heaven. You can't see the kingdom of heaven. If we not born again of the spirit and water, the word of God. How shall the young man cleanse his way? By taking heed, listening according to thy word. So if we not born again here, you can't go in your mother's womb again, right? But Christ was taught, teaching Nicodemus about being born again here. Because it's about the soul being saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. The destruction of the flesh. Because the tabernacle is, that's made with our hands, that's the spiritual body that Christ is going to give his saints in the life. While you on this earth and this body, the saints, while Israel, the saints elect on this earth and this body, they the temple of the living God. So that's why they have to put their bodies as living sacrifices. They have to be holy because they are the temple of the living God, the saints, the elect. Where he, which he purchased with his own blood, God, where the Holy Ghost and God and God dwell. So in this body upon the earth, they have to stay away from the flesh and fornication, because they are the body of the living. Uh, they're the temple of the living God. Great is He that is in you than He that is in the world. So while they in this body, they don't have the spiritual bodies yet. But that's why the Bible says in Ephesians. Chapter 1, verse 12 to 13, to 14, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ and whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye have believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. From Ezekiel 37 and 14, God said he will put his spirit in us. Right? Ezekiel 36, 25 and down, and I think Ezekiel 11 and 19. So through the gospel, that's why Jesus said the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Because after you heard the word of truth, the gospel, you was, after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Where? Why? Um, which is the, until what? Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, which is the body you see, know ye not that you're not your own. First Corinthians 6, 13 to 20, I believe. They were brought with a price. Possession unto the praise of his glory. Right? Ephesians 4 and 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of what? Redemption. When Christ said in Luke, look, when you see these things come to pass, look up for your redemption. Draw now, we shall be changed. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, right? We shall not all sleep until the day of redemption, right? That's why when you go to, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. When you go to Revelations 7 and 1, this is, they're, they're sealed. That's why the 144,000 is sealed after they heard the gospel and they trusted in Christ. They were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That's why they have the Father's name in their foreheads. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, 
Revelation 7 and 1, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from where? The east having the seal of the living God. This is why when you go to John, I'm not going to get too much in it. What did Christ tell the Jews when you were coming right back? When you go to John chapter 6. What did Jesus say? Labor not labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, with the, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him have God the Father what sealed. Let's go to let's see what John said. John chapter 3 and 33. He that have received his what? His testimony have set to his seal that God is true. Because you have they, the saints and the elect, they have the witness in themselves, the testimony. We'll talk about that, our Lord's willing, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's go back to Revelation 7 and verse 2. The east having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees. Why? Till we have sealed the service of our God in their what? Foreheads, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and after you will believe, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And then it tells you how many were sealed. The servants of our God, who is God's servant? Israel. But they are no more, the saints is no more a servant, but what? A son. Because when you go over to, when you go over to Galatians chapter 4, in verse 4 to 7. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law. Who was that? The children of Israel, that we might receive the adoptions of sons. So through Christ, to Abraham and to his seed, what the promise is made, right? And to thy seed, which is Christ. So therefore, through Christ, the saints the elect are the children of Abraham, and they are the children of God now right the children of god because do they got the adoptions of sons through christ right they become the receive the adoptions of son through christ and because ye are sons god have sent forth his forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying abba father wherefore thou are no more a servant who was his servant israel but a son now they're the sons of god the spiritual bodies you they get the spiritual bodies and if a son then an heir of god through christ so if they're heir of God, they have to suffer with Christ so that they can receive the glory as Christ received when he endured everything, right? Um. So the Revelation 7. I'm sorry. Let's go to And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Let's go back to Revelation 7 and 3. Remember, servants of our God, where? In their foreheads. In their foreheads, right? After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the gospel of your salvation, after you believe you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, Let's go to Revelation 13 and 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the what? The everlasting gospel. That's how they were sealed. To preach unto them that dwell upon the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. That's why Christ said the gospel have to be preached in all the world and the end come. It's going to be a witness against the Gentiles and Israel that's in all the nations has to hear the gospel. That's how they are sealed. Okay, the 144,000. And they were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And they have what the Father's name in their foreheads, Revelation 14 and 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with them 140 and 4,000 having his Father's name written in their foreheads. Father's name written in their foreheads because after you heard the gospel, the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, after you believe, you will sit with that Holy Spirit of promise. So they have the Father's name written in their foreheads because didn't Jesus say, I come in my Father's name? So they have the name Jesus written in their foreheads. So that's why when you go to Revelations 22 and verse 3, and there shall be no more curse, 
but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in this, the kingdom of heaven. And his servants, who is his, who is his servant? Israelites, shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be where? In their foreheads. No man have ever seen God's face, but the saints and the elect in the kingdom of heaven is going to see God's face. Because they have his name in their forehead. And now they have put off the mortal and have put on the immortal of the immortality, which is the tabernacles made with our hands, the bodies of Christ. Uh, excuse me, the bodies, the spiritual bodies. Because when you go to 1 Corinthians, that's why when you go to 1 Corinthians, the Bible says in 43, it is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. See, the body. It is sown in weakness, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing because Christ, the word, was made flesh. He came in this weak flesh. That's what the Bible says, for what the Lord could not do and that it was weak through the flesh. The Lord was weak through the flesh because the Lord is spiritual. There's nothing wrong with the law. It was weak through this flesh. That's why we could not keep the law. The carnal, we're doing the works of the flesh, the carnal mind. We needed that atonement because the life is in the blood. That's what John says. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world because his body he's going to offer, which is his body is the temple. Christ didn't, um, he didn't go into the temple made by man's hands where the priest and them go to. He ascended into heaven itself, heaven itself is set on the right hand of, of God. Excuse me, in Jesus' name, my man. And that's why the saints elect, he have made them to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus in the ages to come because they're going to be in the kingdom. They're going to be in heaven with the Lord, you see. Um, it is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is for what the Lord cannot do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sent forth his son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. For Christ suffered for us in the flesh. He have, he that suffered for us in the flesh have ceased from sin. Stop. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and lusts, that he shall no longer live the rest of his time in the, in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. That's what the saints and the elect want to do. It is raised in what? Power. Okay, it is sown in weakness, this body, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body because just like we all have the image of the earthy, which is Adam, the saints elect will have the image of the heavenly, which is God. You understand? That's why the Bible says that they may be conformed to the image of God. He shall change our vile body into his It is on the natural body is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. He shall also quicken our mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in us. Howbeit that was not first, which is what? Spiritual. It wasn't Adam. It was the earthly body with Adam. The spiritual wasn't first. The spiritual is next. But that which is natural was first, this flesh. And after word, that which is spiritual, then it's coming which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, Adam, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. So if Christ said he's coming in his father's glory, and the Bible says he's coming with power and great glory, we don't know what we shall be, but we shall be like him. When he took Peter and them up to the mountain, he was trans, uh, he, he was, um, his face was like the sun, and his raiment was so white, no fellow on earth could white in him. That's how Israel is going to be. The body, they're going to have the same body as Christ. Christ have the same body as God. That's why the Bible says the suffering of this present world is not compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. To get the spiritual body, Israel's going to stay away from the flesh and walk in the spirit. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Because why? 
in the kingdom of we're not talking about the kingdom of jerusalem but the kingdom of heaven the new jerusalem the, the kingdom of heaven you can't go in there with a fleshly body now this i say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god neither doth corruption inherit corruption you can't go you can't enter god's kingdom with an earthly body this is why when you go over here to so second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17 now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty the son of man have set you free you are free indeed free from what sin paul said who have who shall deliver me from the body of this death but we all with an open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord so just how as god look that's how israel gonna look and that's why they didn't want the world to know this truth christ came in his father's name his father's name is jesus christ Christ is coming in his father's glory with all his holy angels. Because Christ is the image of the visible God. That's why Christ said to the woman of Samaria, they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. We are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and have no confidence in the flesh. Because saints, the saints and elect gonna worship God in the spirit. By staying away from the flesh and walking and living in the spirit because they have the spirit of God in Christ in them. You see? So therefore, they belong to Christ. That's why the Bible says, the Lord knows those who are his. And that's why they were standing on the Mount Zion in the end with Christ and Christ giving them crowns. And when you go to Revelation, they came out of great tribulation and washed their garments and made them white and wet the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 7, verse 14, I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. The multiple, the, the people that's coming out of the multitude, kindreds, and tongues, those are Israelites. They are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They have faith in Christ, blood, and name. That's how they was overcame, able to overcome the dragon in Revelations 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their what? Their testimony. They have the witness in themselves and they love not their lives into the death. That's why they don't love this world. They're not going to love this world. They're not going to love their life. They're going to pick up their cross and follow the Lord into the end. All right, um, I know I got off. I just wanted to show you that, Israel. Just wanted to talk about that. Where was we? I think we left off on. Revelations 18. And... Seven. Yeah, we're going to come back. I'm going to end this video. We're going to stop here and we'll come back and we're going to finish from Revelation 18 to 7. We're going to go back. I think I finished. We finished Isaiah 47, 1 to 15, I think. Well, if not, we'll go back and finish that too. All right, so I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the God of Israel, the Ancient of Days, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, God of Gods, Jesus Christ. And to his word, wisdom, and son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of Truth. I'll see y'all in the next lesson, God, Lord's willing. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye.